What's going on, everybody? My name is DRock or Bobby or whatever you want to call me, and uh, today we're going to talk about vocoders, um, specifically how to make your vocoder sing uh, based off of the pitch of your voice. Um, the quick run through of how it's going to work is uh, we are going to um, uh, generate CV off of the pitch of our voice and have it modulate the course pitch inside of Serum and uh, have our vocoder sing back, essentially. Uh, so, a vocoder talk. Um, if you're not familiar with a, with what a vocoder is, it's that Daft Punk sound. You know, it's that synthesizer that, um, that like, talks. Uh, the basic breakdown of it is you've got a carrier and you've got a modulator. The carrier being typically something like a synthesizer and the modulator being something like a voice. Uh, the carrier will generate the general timbre of the sound, for instance, like a sawtooth wave, as well as the as well as the pitch, such as like C3 or a uh, G major chord. And then the modulator modulates, um, I like to think of it as the shape of that sound, and based off of um, like the shape of your of uh, your your voice. Or, um, you know, I've seen people throw like drums into it to create some cool pulsing effects, but that's for a whole nother thing. Um, so I got this session right here. Uh, this was a loop that I started like a couple weeks ago, and um, and I just went down a sound design rabbit hole, and I'll kind of walk you through that rabbit hole that I went down. Um, first, this is the vocal that we will be that we will be working with. Sorry, I burped. This is the vocal we will be working with. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not a singer. Uh, bear with me on this. I've been hoping I could find you, take you on to a brand new place, somewhere no one else could reach you, hold you close and keep you safe. So you get the idea of it. Um, so let's make a quick basic vocoder, okay? So we'll take uh, Serum. I'm using Serum for this because I haven't explored it with um, other synthesizers yet. I'm sure it's possible with other ones. Serum is just just the one that I ended up using. So for this, we're going to work with a Sawtooth Wave. Super exciting, I know. Um, and then we will need a modulator of some sort. I'm going to drag this all the way down to the bottom, though. So let's do uh, a new audio track. And I'm going to throw on a um, an EQ because I know my voice and I know it sounds like absolute trash uh, at like 500, 600 hertz. So let's dive bomb that out of there. And let's put some information down there. Cool. So now we've got our vocal right here. I've been hoping I could find you. Take you off. So, like I said, we're gonna go down uh, the same, the kind of the same rabbit hole that that I did. Now, initially, I didn't want to have my vocoder sing, but that's kind of where I ended up stumbling upon. So, I'll walk you through the process that I that I did to, I guess, discover this. Uh, so, first, let's make this thing an actual vocoder. Um, so, we have our synth, we have our vocal, synth being the carrier, vocal being the modulator. So, if we go to our carrier. Uh, and we're going to go to built-in devices, uh, the BV-512, digital vocoder. So now, you can see that it automatically routes the, the um, audio out from your synthesizer into the, um, into the carrier input. So now, if I were to play something from Serum, we're not hearing anything, but you can see we have output there, and we've got input here. So now let's get our... Um, uh, our modulator to the input uh, of our vocoder. So now, once again, still not quite hearing anything, but if we play back from here and then play some notes, so it's purely based on what notes get get um, input into the carrier. So um, let me put some notes down here. Let's do uh, let's do a C major chord because C major chords are nice and easy, and we'll do you down there because why not have the extra octave? I've been hoping I can find you. Sorry, it's a little loud. There we go. Um, so like, like I said, this sound design rabbit hole. I, I wanted to mess around with some cool stuff. So I got to thinking, what if I took the pulverizer and I used the the follower to generate CV uh, based off of the amplitude of my voice? Um, so if you flip it around, modulation output, you've got uh, your follower output. 
on VSTs inside of uh, inside of Reason 11, you've got um, a modulation CV input. So VSTs can use um, CV as well. So if we take the follower here, we go to CV input one, and then we have to route it somewhere. So I think initially what I did was I had it on like um, on some wavetable, and um, I had the um, uh, the follower CV go into the wavetable position. So I think for this we're just going to use one note. And so let's see what happens here. Cool. So you can see what's going on here. The follower output is moving our wavetable position knob. Based off, of, uh, based off of the follower, which is based off the amplitude or something like that. Or I think it's like how far past the threshold it goes. Um, so then I kept on thinking I wanted to do some more wacky or crazy stuff. So rather than wavetable position, let's go to coarse pitch because I bet that would be really wacky. So let's play back. So yeah, that sounds like a fly buzzing in your ear. Sorry. Um... And I was like, okay, so how do I, so how can I bring that back and tame it? We'll bring the amount down. So kind of cool, um, but it will, but then by doing this, it got me thinking like, oh, how can I, how how can I make this sing to myself, or how can I make the uh, the modulator, um, or how do I, how do I want to phrase this? How do how do I make the uh, the pitch of my voice uh, truly modulate the pitch of uh, the of the carrier in this instance serum. Um, so my first initial thought that I've done in the past a lot of times uh, is um, inside of uh, Reason you've got the, the you've got the pitch editor. Uh, if you drag that up to a MIDI track, it generates MIDI for you, which is directly so the MIDI is based off of the the vowel sounds. Uh, that's why it sounds kind of like choppy because it because it doesn't pick up on those on those um, consonant sounds. Um, I think at least I don't know. Um, so I'm like, that's cool, but it's not truly following the pitch. It's missing all like uh, the microtones in between. Or if I like slid my voice, for example, uh, it wouldn't follow it. For that, what I would always have to do is uh, automate the pitch bend, which. Uh, I wanted this to be all automatic, though, so I didn't want to have to do this. So it does work, but wasn't really what I wanted. So then I got to thinking, how can I generate, um, how can I generate CV from the pitch of 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 my voice? Uh, and reason and pitch, I immediately thought of the Neptune device. Um, uh, where are you? Neptune pitch adjuster. So I, when I first loaded it up, I actually wasn't sure if you could even do this, but I flipped it around and sure enough, CV out pitch. And I was like, yes, score, you can do it. Uh, so you take the CV out from Neptune, bring it to the modulation input. Once again, we are going to the coarse pitch on CV1. Um, within Serum, if uh, you're not familiar, the, the coarse pitch is straight up... Uh, it's pitch that goes, I don't, I don't even know how, how many octaves, but uh, it goes from 64 to 64 and has uh, decimal points in between, so you get super smooth results with it. Uh, apparently my controls aren't working for that. There we go. So now, if we play it back. So it is following the pitch of my voice, but it's not exact. It is overshooting it on like either side. So if you drop this down to 64, well, come on, there you go. Um, it'll follow it truly, as long as this is a middle C. So like like I said, that gets all of those microtones in be in between that your voice is um, that your voice can generate um, that you can't that it doesn't pick up if you just drag 
the pitch adjust information up. Um, so like right here, actually, I've got, uh, I think like a siren woo and like a yeah or something like that. So to truly demonstrate it with that woo, you can hear it right here. This is the first one that I that that I made. So yeah, you can do some like really wacky stuff with it. Um, it's probably not necessarily it's not necessarily something I would use, uh, but it was a really fun rabbit hole to go down uh, to figure out how this would be possible. Um, so quick recap. Uh, for vocoders, you've got your carrier, you've got your modulator. We want to have the pitch of the modulator um, affect the carrier's pitch uh, in, you know, for, at like a one-to-one -one ratio, I guess. Um, so that if you sing a middle C, it plays back a middle C. If you sing a G5, it's going to play back a G5. If you slide from, uh, from G5 all the way down to C0, I don't know, uh, then your then the carrier is going to follow that pitch all the way down. To achieve that, we've got our we've got our instance of Serum. Uh, we have our vocoder. We have our audio track with some uh, with some audio information. We've got the thing that makes my voice not sound like garbage, and we've got Neptune. So we take the CV out uh, uh, from Neptune. Uh, the, the, so we take the pitch CV out from uh, Neptune. Go into the modulation CV in on Serum. Set it to coarse pitch, uh, set the amount to 64, and then you get a true uh, representation of the of the pitch of your voice uh, from your carrier. So yeah, um, hope that you got something out of this, whether it was learning how to use a vocoder or this weird trick that uh, you might use for something. I'm sure, I'm hoping that somebody can take this idea and like run with it, uh, f you know, to the moon and back and get, make something super wacky. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about this or anything other audio or sound design shenanigans related, uh, you can drop a comment or shoot me a message. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I will catch you on the flippity flop.